A lot of you have asked me about my opinion on RTX stock, which used to be Raytheon, then they merged with United Technologies, and now it's RTX Corporation. The stock has been an absolute disaster. It's sitting at $71 per share, and one of the lowest it's traded at since 2021. It's an absolute disaster. There's a lot of problems with the company, but I personally see a massive, massive opportunity to take advantage from the uncertainty in the market. I mean, I see RTX, I mean, as an amazing value proposition, there's a lot of things that could go wrong, but there's also a lot of things that could go right with an amazing high quality defense contractor. And RTX is not just Raytheon, they do have three segments. The first segment is Collins Aerospace, and they mainly, you know, work in the technology stuff behind a lot of the aircraft, a lot of mission technologies and stuff. So, a lot of technology stuff within military and even commercial aircraft. Then they have the popular Pratt and Whitney division, which was in United Technologies whenever they merged. This is where the problem is with the engines. So Pratt and Whitney does make as engines, as most of you actually know. And then you have Raytheon, which is the most uh, popular one. It used to be called Raytheon. This has a lot of you know military stuff, especially missiles, hypersonic missiles, defense missile systems, the Patriot program is for Raytheon. So they do specialize in a lot of military stuff, but especially high-end missiles. And most of you know the story of what happened with RTX. They found some kind of a rare powder metal problems within a lot of the engines of the Pratt and Whitney division of RTX. And then there are going to be around six to 700 engines that will be removed for shop visits between 2023 and 2026. There's a lot of aircraft that are going to be grounded from the GTF a fleet, I mean, it's going to be very, very bad. And then RTX a pre is going to face a pre-tax operating profit between three billion to three and a half billion over the next several years. The market is freaking out. The stock is going down. I mean, first it was a small problem. Then a few months later, it came out to be a much larger problem than it actually is. A lot of analysts are claiming it could even get worse. Now, I personally believe it's not going to get worse. I think a lot of the worst is actually priced in. I mean, the company slashed a lot of the guidance, but they do expect three to three and a half billion over the next several years. The cost is actually much, much higher, but 51% is owned by, uh, you know, Pratt & Whitney. So there's partners that RTX has that's going to face the 49%. So the real cost is somewhere around six or seven billion dollars, but RTX is only going to face 50% of that. And this is pretty much the free cash flow guidance. They had much higher free cash flow guidance for 2023, but it's only going to be 4.3 billion for 2023 the 2025 outlook is going to be around 7.5 billion it used to be 9 billion now it's 7.5 now the main reason for the massive increase from 4.3 billion to 7.5 billion is actually rtx is still somewhat integrating the pratt and whitney of united technologies they uh, found a lot of efficiencies they did reduce a lot of the capacity in terms of manufacturing they use a lot of you know similar facilities for a lot of stuff a lot of cross selling products you know a, a lot of labor has been actually saved they actually saved a lot of money on ordering materials because they are now much much larger between pratt and whitney and rtx uh, other divisions so it's been pretty amazing the free cash was ex is expected to expand massively it should have been nine billion but now it's only seven and a half billion expected for 2025 including all the costs that are going to be faced within you know the program to actually you know investigate and kind of fix the Pratt and Whitney engines. Now, this is how I personally think about RTX upside. There's two or three main ways I think of how I could potentially make money with RTX. And if I look at the market cap to free cash flow multiple, it was trading at a mean of 22.6 times earnings over the last five years. In my opinion, this is a somewhat of a fair multiple it used to even trade at 27 or 28 and it should trade at a some kind of a, a premium in my opinion because of the high geopolitical issues that we're actually facing rtx is positioned in a lot of high growth areas they have a massive backlog the market cap of rtx is around 100 billion dollars and they have 185 billion dollar backlog across their divisions i mean it's 
it's pretty astonishing to me, pretty amazing. They've been growing organically 8 to 10% every single year. And the market cap to free cash flow again, it's now sitting at 18 times, it used to trade at a mean of 22 times. Now, the way I think about it is now RTX is trading at a discount because of the massive uncertainty around the Pratt and Whitney division of what's happening with the engines. And this is what the market does. The market hates uncertainty. You have a lot of companies that do some kind of an acquisition. The stock goes down because of uncertainty. And then whenever the market realized that it was actually a good thing, then it just prices in the bad news, then you have massive moves to the upside. We have seen it with a lot of companies that go up 50 to 100 percent after such high uncertainty situations actually happen. And this is how I personally think of RTX. It's now trading at around $104 billion market cap. So let's say $100 billion market cap. Now the free cash flow is $7.5 billion for 2025. Now, seven and a half billion, if it trades at 20 times the multiple of market cap to free cash flow, and I personally believe by 2025, it should be more clear around the inspection of RTX. They would have done most of the engines. They would have pulled them out, fixed their stuff, do the inspection. It would be much more clear. So there would be much less uncertainty. So if RTX trades at 20 times free cash flow of seven and a half billion, this is around the $150 billion market cap. The current market cap is roughly hundred billion. This is over 50% on the upside over the next pretty much two years with RTX and you're also getting some kind of a dividend of around 3.1% that you collect every single year while you wait. The company is also buying back around $3 billion of you know shares every single year. So this is 3% of the market cap and a 3% dividend. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing to me. This is how I think about RTX in the short term, but maybe there's more impact. Maybe the free cash flow ends up being much less than seven and a half billion by 2025. But as I talked about before, because of the efficiencies between, you know, what they're finding between Pratt and Whitney and RTX other divisions, it was expected to be nine billion by 2025. Now it's not gonna be nine billion anymore. It's gonna be seven and a half billion. But a lot of the analysts are expecting the nine billion to potentially come into 2026. Now, this is very uncertain. Let's assume there was just more bad stuff happening with RTX and the seven and a half billion doesn't come in 2025. Let's say in 2026 or 2027, you get something like the nine billion dollars of free cash flow that the market was actually expecting. So if we do get to nine billion dollars by 2027 and it trades at 20 times free cash flow, this is a 180 billion dollar market cap. This is over 80 percent on the upside over the next three to four, year, four years. If it gets there by 2026, 2027, and you still have the 3% dividend. So in my opinion, I'm just seeing a lot of uncertainty with RTX. I mean, the company is starting to get, in my opinion, too cheap to ignore. It's sitting at 14 times earnings. The mean was 19 to 20 times. It's growing 10% revenues, 185 billion backlog for a 100 billion market cap, very high gross areas. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of potential with the company. There could be a little bit more risks you know, down the road if more stuff actually happened, but the management sounded confident that they pretty much priced in everything within the three and a half billion uh, hit and, and one and a half billion hit in 2025. But I just believe after 2025 in general, there's gonna be more clarity around everything because they would have pulled out the engines and did what they had to do. This is not the first time RTX experiences something like that or any other defense companies. They have been there before as they did a lot of things and they fixed their problems, they moved on. The stock eventually recovered, the stock went up. Uh, people that bought were actually rewarded. Again, it's not financial advice, but I believe RTX presents an amazing opportunity. I mean, there could be more problems, like the stock could go lower because the chart is very, very weak. But I'm just seeing massive value with RTX. I think the company is going to buy back a lot of stock at cheap prices, create value for shareholders over the long term. The balance sheet, it's not the best in the world, but it's not bad. It's around 5.4 billion of cash. They have around 32, pretty close to 33 billion dollars of debt. So that might go up a little bit more because of you know what's happening right now but again they have between five to seven and a half billion of free cash flow so it's not the worst balance sheet in the world they have a massive backlog so i believe rtx presents an amazing buying opportunity you know it's not fair advice it could go lower if something comes up with the engine no matter what i say in this video it's, it's going much much lower so you have to have some kind of a plan to dollar cost average down and not 
you know, be upset if you're wrong or something. But I believe RTX is presenting an amazing buying opportunity at a discounted multiple when it should be trading at a premium in this high uncertainty geopolitical kind of environment. So I really like RTX here. I think, in my opinion, it's, it's very undervalued. You know, thank you for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I hope to see you in another video.